so easy. Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's video is lazy day meals. The meals that you have when you're taking a day for yourself to relax, but you still wanna cook something yummy and not just order in. So, in other words, really easy to make meals. <laughs> today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, and the artist today is Splitting Borders. I actually found them on Etsy because I was looking for postcards for my postcard club, which is a part of Patreon, and I just loved the pen and ink style that they do. And I found out that they started making a web comic after a job loss, kind of like me here on YouTube. I'm leaving links to where you can see their work as well as a link to a short animated film that they made, which was based on one of the designs that you'll be seeing. Okay, let's start with our first meal, Lazy Meal. <laughs> Hi Beryl, my name is Mai. I was born and raised in Vietnam, but I now live in California. The dish I want to share with you today is called tomato rice, which is exactly how it sounds like. It is a whole tomato that you cooked with rice as the rice is cooking. Better yet, if you have a rice cooker, so just put the whole tomato in the rice cooker with the rice, a liquid, turn the rice cooker on, let it do its thing. And that's it. Um, I would highly recommend putting some seasoning into the liquid. My favorite is a combination of a little bit of fish sauce and some sugar and lots and lots and lots of pepper. And what happens is when the tomato is cooked with the rice, as the rice is cooking, it turns really plump. And you would get a paddle to smash that tomato in with the rice. So you end up with some sort of tomato sauce coats around the rice. If you're really, really lazy like I was sometimes, I would just craft in like a raw egg in the rice cooker when the rice is still hot and just mix it up. Let it sit for like five minutes so the egg will be like cooked and you would have some sort of carbonara-like sauce with your rice. It's so delicious. I was in college and I was broke all the time. My knees was always tight and I just didn't have anything to eat, so my choices were ramen noodles, crackers, peanut butter sandwich, or I can make myself some rice. In Vietnamese cuisine, in Vietnamese culture in general, rice holds a very high significance. Rice is in the heart of Vietnamese cuisine. When I was living by myself in college, I got no one to take care of me, I was on my own. So cooking myself a fresh pot of rice sort of makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself. I'm my own family now. I'm, I'm taking care of me the way my family would have taken care of me if they're here with me right now. It's, it's, a, it's a form of self-care. Okay, this Instapot tomato, I love the concept of so much. It's so smart. And the tomato was like so soft, just like when I did it. I added a couple little like accoutrements, like some kimchi and some of my favorite chili oil. Be oh no, is it? I can't see. Oh, -ho. yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I should have put more fish sauce in. Ugh, I knew I was being tender with it. Oh well. It's really good. And like simple and affordable, super passive cooking. I love that. I loved what Mai said about cooking the rice as a way of kind of taking care of herself the way her parents and family would have taken care of her. I don't know, it was something like, I wish I'd thought about things like that when I was in college. I treated my body like a garbage dump. Just ate <laughs> whatever. Because, I don't know, it was a different time. You live and you learn, you know? If I had known about this then, I 100% would have been making this instead of all the packs of <coughs> ramen that I ate. Ooh, I got a little bit of fish sauce good flavor in that one. And mixing the egg in there, like the egg kind of helped bind the rice more as well. It just like, it is, it's like creamy and it's warm and it's thick and I just like love thick rice like this. I feel like this episode might be one where I do use a lot of recipes moving forward because like who doesn't want simple and delicious recipes? Like that's really what we only want, right? This is delicious. Highly recommend you try it. Recipes are all in the description. Okay, next dish.
Hello everyone, my name is Marcella and I'm coming to you from Montreal, Canada, but I am originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. The lazy dish I want to share with you today is called polenta con tuco queso or in English polenta with tomato sauce and cheese. I really love making this dish on lazy days because it doesn't take a lot of work but it also feels really good to eat. In Argentina, polenta is really really cheap and it even because it's so cheap it has a bit of a bad reputation of it being not sophisticated enough or really boring but it is something that is I like to say in Spanish bueno bonito barato which means good good looking and cheap in my family my dad and I are probably the polenta lovers a lot of times maybe I'll go visit or I'll stay over and it'll be cold and we will just look at each other and be like it's a polenta night right it's really nice and it's a way in which we can bond i am a big proponent of lazy days i think in the summer i sometimes feel a little bit guilty about the lazy days or taking lazy days but once fall or winter come then it's a free for all and i love to have those lazy days where i know i'm not gonna do anything where i don't feel guilty about staying home watching movies or tv or working on my hobbies and just you know reading a good book i really hope everyone watching will locate some instant polenta in their towns and have this ready for those nights where you just really don't want to cook i promise you it will be like someone is just hugging you it will feel decadent it will feel luxurious but it'll take you three minutes to make it and you're gonna love it okay I have a polenta dish and I have learned through this channel that I love polenta. It was a little hard to make look like pretty in the beginning. <laughs> Come on, it's like nicer. But I kind of feel like I got there. Ooh, it's cheesy. Yep, I knew I would love this. So, easy oh my gosh it's funny because for me polenta has always had this kind of like fancy vibe to it which is why i never really made it i always thought it was going to be really hard to make instant polenta it kind of tastes like a deconstructed pizza so warm and comforting and like i mean i say this about a lot of things if you put a fried egg on this that would be so good this literally took like seven minutes to make, I think. And I was filming. I love this. I just love it. <laughs> I wanna make this for somebody else. I like that this meal has everything that's kind of pre-made, but it doesn't feel like a pre-made dish at the same time. Like it feels like you took some time to make something for yourself, but you didn't have to exert too much energy. It just tastes like a pizza. <laughs> but like not a pizza. It's like a non-pizza pizza. Pizza pizza. Does anyone know what that's from? Before we get into our next dish, I want to take a moment and talk about the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. I like them as a sponsor because I feel like more and more we're acknowledging how our mental health is something that is important to take care of. And taking care of yourself can look like a lot of different things. It can be taking a day to just relax and do nothing, and it can also be talking to somebody. BetterHelp is an online counseling service that connects you to therapists within 48 hours of signing up. It doesn't matter where you're living, the service is available worldwide. And personally, I've actually had a really good experience with BetterHelp. I was able to connect with a therapist who I really, really liked. Therapy is definitely not like a one size fits all thing. And so sometimes it does take a couple of times to get the right therapist. It took me three times, but it ended up very positive at the end. If you're interested in signing up, go to betterhelp.com. That's H-E-L-P backslash barrel and you'll get 10% off your first month. Okay, let's continue on and try some more foods. Hi, my name is Gall and I live in Philadelphia in the United States. The lazy day meal I'm super excited to talk to y'all about is the loaded baked potato. It is simple, versatile, and delightful. Growing up, my mom would make us like a simple Israeli salad with some feta and labneh dumped on top of a baked potato. Now my go-to 
is some baked beans, some sauteed mushrooms, a nice Italian sausage, or just like a really simple chili. It is the perfect meal for a lazy day because it's very important that you have the ability to just walk away from a baking potato. So you can go catch up on your shows, hang out with your cats. It works for me in particular because I am a hungry nine month pregnant groundskeeper. I've got a big, big belly right here. <laughs> so the last thing that I wanna do when I come home from work is be on my feet too long making dinner. So this is kind of like a weekly staple in my house. This dish also reminds me of bonfires at my grandparents' farm. All the kids would come together and we'd make a big fire and we'd just toss potatoes into the fire and wait for the fire to tie down and then just eat this like burnt charcoal potato at the end. And it was probably disgusting, but I only remember them being delicious. Um, and it was something that my mom did when she was a kid and something that I would like to be able to somehow, in some way, share with um, my future human one day. I love having lazy days. I mean, of course I do. Uh, my life is about to change pretty drastically in like less than a week. So I am soaking up every opportunity I have to watch TV and hang out with my cats in our big, beautiful apartment. So we had a small mishap. I did not record the audio. So I did eat half of this on camera, like chit chatting away. Um, and there's no audio. So we're gonna pretend that I didn't and turn the potato this way. <laughs> Luckily, like, I've had a potato before, so it's not, we're not gonna be like, whoa, does Barrel like potatoes? Because the answer is yes. I like potatoes. Um, okay. <laughs> before I get too into this again, I wanna say congratulations to Gal because she will have had her baby by now. Yay! And uh, I guess I'm gonna be eating some more potato. And it's still delicious. <laughs> this is great. Mm. And I put a hefty dose of cheese on here, so it's like stringy and nice. I feel like I've heard so many of these YouTubers who are like, oh my God, I forgot to hit record on the audio. And I always thought to myself like, what? That's silly. Whoops. <laughs> Do people not like potatoes? I can't believe that. I feel like everybody in the whole world loves potatoes, right? I'm definitely curious to know what toppings you guys would put on a baked potato. This one, classic. I do have one question that I would love an answer to from anybody who knows about this, but God was talking about throwing potatoes into a bonfire and then eating them. And like, first of all, that sounds so fun. How do you get the, 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 the potatoes out? Like, do you, do you wrap them in foil, throw them in, and like use a stick to get them out? I don't know, like I have no idea. I'm so curious though, so somebody let me know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jane and I'm from Povarska Bystrica, Slovakia. The dish I want to share with you today is called Makvarezance or poppy seeds noodles. I love spending time in the kitchen, but I'm, sometimes I just don't feel like cooking and that's when I usually crave something sweet. And there is no better meal for that than Makvarezance. You can use your favorite pasta, but it's traditionally made with noodles, powdered sugar, poppy seeds and everything is coated in melted butter. The dish itself is not exactly Instagram worthy look wise, but it's definitely everything you need on lazy days. It's sweet, rich and light at the same time. If you don't like poppy seeds, you can even substitute them for nuts, curd, shredded coconut or even instant chocolate powder. Mako are one of our national meals. Slovak cuisine is mostly humble yet filling because the older generations could only cook from the ingredients they themselves produce at home. Puppy seeds are used in many dishes in desserts here. In some regions it can be missing on the Christmas dinner table because puppy seeds symbolize profusion and when you say I wish you as much money as puppy seed it means you wish them less. Sweet pasta might seem like a strange combination, but for us it's typical to have 
sweet flower based lunch or dinner. My mom used to make this dish for us when she was busy with cleaning the house and needed to feed the whole family by making something quick. I definitely like the taste more now than I did back then though. <laughs> Trying new foods is one of my favorite things to do but there are times when we feel the need to come back to our roots because nothing offers better comfort than taste of home. The dish is not only super easy to prepare but it's made of ingredients everyone has at home so just give it a try. Dobru chuť or bon appetit! Well, I don't really know what to say about this dish. Poppy seeds and powdered sugar on pasta with butter. The butter part, yes. The other two parts with pasta, I don't, it kind of is reminding me maybe of the Polish dish I had, which was like strawberries and cream on pasta, but. Huh. Sweet pastas are definitely interesting you can't it's not there's nothing to dislike here but it also honestly slightly confuses me also i feel like my teeth are just covered in poppy seeds now the poppy seeds i'm not sure do poppy seeds have a flavor or are they just like they must right it's sweet and doughy and so it has like it's giving me the vibes of eating like a deconstructed pastry oh my god my teeth oh yeah oh that's a that's a mess i'm gonna talk with my lips barely parting now <laughs> so yeah it's got like the vibes of a deconstructed pastry but you know also maybe i should have put more powdered sugar on it i don't know this is 100% one of those dishes, like if I was in Slovakia, first of all, if I saw this on a menu, I would be like, we have to try this. And second, I think it's a little bit about like where you are. If I was hanging out with Jane, I feel like I would be like, oh my God, this is so fun. And I would probably tell people about it. Do you know what I mean? Context. Also, you guys know, like I don't really have a big sweet tooth. And so in general, sweets are a harder sell on me. You know that movie, like there's something about Mary. I would say like there's something about this pasta, but I can't necessarily put my finger on it where I do like it. Hello Vero. My name is Lucas and I am from Issaquah, Washington. I'm originally from São Pedro da Aldeia, a small town in the lake side of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The dish I want to share with you today is called Salada de Macarrão or Tuna and Noodle Salad. The tuna noodle salad is an easy dish that it's made of basically leftover pasta and a cream tuna that we make with canned tuna, Japanese mayo, fresh onions, and some raisins. But if you're feeling extra fancy, you can sprinkle some bits of crunchy bacon on it. It tastes amazing. This is a perfect dish for a lazy day because if you already have the leftover pasta in your fridge, it's gonna take about two minutes to make it. <laughs> It's creamy, salty, you have the freshness of the onions and also the sweet surprise of the raisins. It adds a lot if you put the bacon. Put the bacon. You can find this dish in many self-service restaurants in Brazil. We serve it in the middle when you're having barbecue while you're waiting for the meat. And also during Lent, because Brazil is a big Catholic country, so the time of the year that we don't eat meat, that's a go-to. The thing about this dish in Brazil is that every time you make it, you need to make half with raisins and half without it. Because my country is divided basically on the raisins lovers and the raisins haters. I'm a lover. Part of why I love this dish so much is because it's one of the first things I learned how to cook when I was a kid. And I used to cook it a lot with my brother. And I don't see my family since 2018. And every time I make it, I kind of feel closer to home and I feel closer to my brother. It does make me feel very happy every time I eat it. Oh, I do love my lazy days. I work in a big retail store, so every opportunity I have to have a lazy day, that's what I'm gonna do. I usually separate 15 hours to sleep and nine hours to eat or play video games, usually together. I think that everybody should try this dish once because it's easy to make, it's delicious, and it tastes like home. Okay. Final dish, and it is a tuna pasta salad with raisins. 
The raisins uh, throw me off a little bit. However, I've now done a few things with dried fruit where I've been proven uh, wrong to think otherwise. Wait, what? I've been wrong before. I also was gonna skip out on the bacon, but Lucas said twice in the video not to. So baconed up it is. Mmm, bacon. <laughs> Raisin. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Ooh, it's really good. Tuna and raisins? I would have never thought. Mm -mm. When Lucas told me that I have to use Japanese mayonnaise, you knew I was excited to bring out my Kewpie. And if you guys haven't tried it yet, I found a recipe online to make it at home, which I'm leaving in the description. So, you know, that's one way to try it. And this is totally something that you can keep in your refrigerator for a couple of days. <gasps> oh my goodness. I like saw myself spilling food out of the corner of my eye. Oh man. I am pro raisin and definitely on the pro bacon team here. It's very good. Cause it's kind of like salty and crunchy. And if you don't eat bacon, fake bacon, turkey bacon. I mean, it's just about having something crunchy. I mean, honestly, maybe even potato chips. <laughs> the one thing that I feel like this needs is like a little hot sauce, but I'm not gonna get up. I really like this episode, not only because the recipes were easy to make, you guys have given me some real doozies in the past, <laughs> but also because I feel like a lot of kind of society tells us we need to always be doing something. Yes, these days are important. You don't always need to be going, 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 going. So if you guys would like me to do another episode like this, leave a comment with a dish that you like to make when you're having a lazy day. And with that, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.